Okay, so earlier this week I finished the Pirates of the Sea Coast or whatever they're called. I just finished the campaign and it was very enjoyable. And I wanted to make a tutorial to help you out with the pirate gameplay because it's got different gameplay mechanics than you might be used to. This is for the video game Total War Warhammer 2. I know it's an older game. If your PC can run it, I highly recommend it. You can probably get it for very cheap since it is uh, since Total War series is doing a super sale right now and even Total War Warhammer 3 is free to play for the time being. Um, but I'm not going to purchase it yet because I still have plenty of stuff to explore in Total War Warhammer 2. And I bought that, bought this one a long time ago. And I really enjoy the gameplay and I highly recommend the this uh, game if you are into real-time strategies. So, Pirates of the Coast. I played as Count Noculus in the Eye of Vortex campaign. What is his goal? Count Noculus' goal in this game is pretty unique and I like it and I enjoyed it and I got to bring out my inner pirate and it was very fun. So here we go. You role play as Count Noculus. He is trying to kill and resurrect the ancient sea creature guardian called Manamar. Myamar, something like that. My, my, Manamar. I, I don't know. They all have weird names. That's what he's trying to do. How does he do that? Well, he needs a magical harpoon. And how do you get the magical harpoon? You need to fight the pirates that know the magic spells. So then you can put those spells on the harpoon and then you kill the harpoon. And then you resurrect Manamar. Count Noculus is a necromancer. He is a person that takes dead things and resurrects them for his needs. And he enslaves them. He, he makes thralls. The medieval fantasy universe uh, covers this quite often, and uh, so you know it's basically the snow, the snow zombies. You know they're all you know from Game of Thrones, uh, snow zombies. But except instead of snow zombies, these are pirate zombies. You've seen them in probably the movie um, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean. So it, it's that's what Count Noculus wants to do. He wants to resurrect. Um, Manamar for his use. It's easy to control Manamar when he's a zombie thrall. So, that's the overall campaign. So, let's go over the pirate gameplay mechanics. You need to make money, you need to become infamous, and then you need to do the final battle against Manamar. So, let's start off with the money. How do you make money? Well, you can do it the classic way of take over cities and make money through owning cities. But you don't make a lot of money. You make a lot more money through doing the pirate activities. What are the pirate activities? Well, you can make pirate coves. You can sack cities. You can raise settlements and cities. You can find shipwrecks at sea. And you can find buried treasure. All of these are very pirate things. And we're going to go through those gameplay mechanics so that you can try them and be a successful pirate. So, let's... Find the coastline. You know, yeah. So, let's start off with sea treasure. First, when you come, ac when you come across a sea treasure, it's going to have this little glowy thing on it. You know? And there's, there's a bunch of them just sitting around somewhere. I think I maybe gobbled up some of these other ones before the tutorial. But there's some in the middle of the sea. There's some just sitting around. Um, you, you know, here's another one. So you, you can find all these treasures. When you find bring one, you need to bring me. an army to that location. But make sure your stance is... Standard. Otherwise, you will blow right past it, and it's not good. So let's Please go I and move our character over to the treasure. Boop. So when you come across the treasure, you may have to defeat a foe, or if you can't fight the foe, you just hit the little weight and get a little bit of treasure. Well, let's let's fight 
the foe, and let's auto resolve. And you know what we want. Yay. So now we've got treasure, we've got uh, loyalty and infamy, but I don't need to really click this because my uh, Count Noculus is my faction leader, he'll never be unloyal. And then we can replenish our troops. Let's just grab some money. Some souls are worth more so there we go. This was the mission. We got the treasure. And we got 8,000 with that. Okay. That is a lot of money. Flotilla of the dark. Okay. That's a lot of money for being a pirate. So those shipwrecks are important. Keep finding them. You need to find a couple every turn. Okay. So that's oceanic treasure. Now let's talk about raiding the coast. That is something pirates love to do, raid the coast. Um, I raided all this coast. I raided all that coast. And a little bit over here and a little bit over there. So raiding pirate coasts. I'm about to do it over here. When you raid the coast. Now why did I say it has to be the coast? It's because they have ports. And you need to be able to make pirate coves. That's another pirate gameplay mechanic. How do we make a pirate cove? All well, on you gotta attack yes, a city that once. has a port. So let's go do that. Let's attack Creep right here. So. Close victory. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the tutorial purposes, the I'm gonna hit auto resolve. We won. Boom. So as you can see, we can occupy. I don't recommend that. We can sack, which is fine, but then the settlement's not gonna make a lot of money. As much money as establishing a pirate cove. You can also raise it. Get a lot of infamy. You get 200, which is really good. But I recommend clicking establish a pirate cove. A okay. new hideout. As you can see, you made a new hideout. Pirate cove. There we go, there we go, there we go. And as you can see, my loyalty went up. Early, earlier it was 6 out of 10. Now it's 7 out of 10. Loyalty is another gameplay mechanic we're going to have to work on. So here is the Pirate Cove. As you can see, I got this little glowy skull, which is wonderful. So now when I click it, I have construction. When I can either make... I have four building options. There's the uh, Picaroon's Hideout, which is half of the money of the settlement I get access to. Or I can do the Smuggler's Cove, which guarantees me 200 now as you can see this settlement doesn't have a lot of money it doesn't make a lot of money we're still early game ish kind of and the rats just don't make a lot of money that way anyways so i might opt to do this one 200 both of them give me infamy now if i go with this other branch i can do uh recruitments and and recruitment capacities and all these heroes so i can have a lot of heroes going around or i can go with this other side here where I gain a lot of infamy and some vampire corruption. Uh, I like the money part the most because money is essentially the main resource of this game. You can buy your way out of any problem. You just all you need to do is buy a bigger army. And so there you go. We you know you you, you click one of these and it takes a turn to build. And I'm gonna go with uh, this one. So making some money. And I made a lot of money by. Um. Uh, doing, doing the battle itself too. I made two thousand from that. So as you can see, I made eight thousand from C, two thousand from doing this. So I made ten thousand in one turn. Now, what's another pirate thing I do? Uh. Uh, we can look for treasure. So let's. How do we do looking for treasure? We go over here. Let me find. Uh, maybe maybe I have a hero somewhere that's near a treasure chest. I think. Where is she? She's walking way over here because I think that's something. I, I don't remember her mission I gave her. Oh, what about this one? Yeah, here we go. So we've got treasure hunting. Pistols 
Ready. So as you can see, when I open up a treasure map, I've got little question marks here. And if I click the magnifying glass, it takes me to probably about where the treasure is. So the treasure is like somewhere around here. So all you gotta do is just kind of move a character somewhere. On land. Walk, 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 walk. And then there's this little dig button, and then you dig for treasure. Round them. And if you were in the correct spot, you're gonna find the treasure. Now, what does this character do? Ready. She can. Uh, oh, oh! By the way, when you when you dig for treasure, Fleet your character Captain can't move anymore. Reported. That's her turn. So I recommend doing that with heroes and not with armies, because armies need to move. Fallen decans. He can the technically dig for treasure, death. but I don't. I don't recommend it. All right. So. Heroes can also do something else, which is establish pirate coves. So some settlements are way too big for you to assault ever, but they make a lot of money. So as you can see, I have a pirate cove, but there's no way I assaulted Lorthen because look at the garrison they have, and they have an army. So how did I get a garrison there? How did I get a settlement there? Or not a garrison, a pirate cove. Well, some heroes can make a pirate cove by just showing up and establishing a pirate cove. So let's find, you know, Kurt. Buccaneer of the dead. Here we go. Let's see here. Uh, find something on the coast. Maybe it's the other one. Maybe that's what she was doing. Walk, 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 walk. So as you can see, I clicked the hero. She already established a Pirate Cove seven turns ago. But she's just going to walk around and it's going to take her maybe seven turns to get over there. So when I right click, it says establish a Pirate Cove. And there you go. It's going to have a cost uh, because I, you know, recently established a Pirate Cove. Recently establishing a Pirate Cove does cost a lot of money. So you can see Stripple here. But, you know, we, we're, we're doing okay. But that's how you would make a pirate cove on a settlement that you cannot possibly uh, assault. So that's establishing a pirate cove. Um, what else do I have? So we've got sacking and raising settlements. I recommend doing that for settlements that are more inland because the pirate coves are going to be having a steady stream of income. Sacking, you just kind of move out. Sack it, come back, and sometimes you can make a beachhead because this 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 is way out here. So sometimes you might want to establish a beachhead. So I made I made this volcanic islands over here, mine, so I can create armies, resupply myself, have a beachhead, so I can push in, sack something, come back, push in, sack something, come back, and if I keep doing that, I'm gonna get more loyalty with this character and. Uh, more infamy to progress through the campaign. Uh, and then, you know, we talked about the land treasures. So the, so th that's that's pretty good for the money. We got we got sea, we got ports, we got inland, and we can make coves uh, in, in two different ways. Now let's talk about infamy. How do we get infamy? Well, if you hover over it, it says how to get infamy. Raising settlements gets you 200 uh, for other. Those are probably the uh, buildings I have constructed on my pirate ships. They gain infamy. Pirate coves. Uh, I have 10 of them, I think. So, or 9 of them because it's 90. You have enemy units that you killed. I killed a bunch just now. I killed a bunch in the ocean just uh, with the first uh, auto resolve and the second auto resolve gave me even more here. So I got 150 infamy. Assassinating characters I think is 100 infamy as well. I highly recommend making an assassin guy. This guy, I literally named him Assassin King. He is full assassin with his character stuff. So he's like hero success plus 6%, assassinating 15, 15, you know, uh, and he's been leveling up, and every time he goes somewhere, he just has, like, 50% chance of assassinating someone or more. 
More assassinations is better. So keep assassinating. That's a very pirate thing to do. Um, now let's talk about. So we got we got this. We got this. As your loyalty goes up, or sorry, your infamy goes up, you will uh, one of these sea shanty verse pirate groups will challenge you. Then you have to defeat them in combat. When you defeat that army in combat, you're going to get access to a sea shanty, which will make a little icon up here, and then you get uh, a nice ability for war. Combat. So those are... That's how you get to uh, the, the end game. You gotta do all this infamy. Ladder. Get all three sea shanties and do the final fight. Now, technology. I'm not gonna give you big details on technology, but I highly recommend when you're ready to make another army, have this sentries in command. That means Lord Recruit ranks are gonna be plus five passive. Uh, and then that means that any legend, uh, any Lord you recruit is, is gonna be instantly able to hold a position in office. Pirates have offices. So that would be here. Click. So when you have someone that is level 5 or higher with loyalty and he is ranked 5, he can sit in one of these offices. So this guy, he is, you know, he, he, he's doing pretty good. Uh, this guy, he's not a high enough rank right now. He, his loyalty is also, his loyalty is uh, fine because it's loyalty of five for these other lower positions, but his rank isn't five for uh, level. He's only ranked two. I hired him before I finished that um, technology research, so they can come in with a high enough loyalty and high enough rank to get an office position immediately, and these office positions are very, very good for bonuses. So those are the offices. The rights are the next part here. This Curse of Be uh, Bountiful Treasure is great for um, making a little extra money. It's free to do, and depending on how much uh, uh, buried treasure research technology or research chain or construction chain you have, um, you're gonna have a good amount here. This is my favorite unit to have, Queen Bess. It is hilarious. It is a region of renown. A renowned. And it's it, it just really it really helps. Um, and then this one is important if your pirates are not staying loyal enough. Pirates lose loyalty when they're not doing piratey things. So they need to be killing, they need to be sacking, they need to be raising. They need to, well, uh, be, be doing pirate things. They need to be on the open seas getting treasured like our, our, our faction leader did just now. Um, so, this guy... All bones on oop, death. Uh, let's go to this one. So this guy has a loyalty thing. You will lose loyalty if you disband troops. You will gain loyal... Uh, and you will lose loyalty over time. You will gain loyalty by winning in fights. Now, as you can see, this pirate doesn't have a loyalty marker. That's because he is always loyal. Uh, in the technology tribe, uh, 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 tree, in a technology tree, you have these ones here. They cost 2,000 infamy points to research. So you have to consider when you're going to do that or not. So these are legendary admirals. They have no loyalty issues whatsoever. Uh, they just cost infamy. And they can hold office positions pretty quick. Alright. So we've been over how to make money. That's the bat. Uh, that's with coves. We've been over how to make coves. That's through battling a city with a port and clicking establish cove. 
or using a hero and that hero uh, when you click on the hero you can establish a cove where did that hero go she was up here right Man, where did that little take? I hunger for blood. There she is. So yeah, here she is. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna show you this little little button here. If if you hover over this trait thing, she says she has to wait seven turns first before establishing a cove. So so that's the the coves, the battle or the heroes. Uh, the fleets they can sack and raise settlements when they're inland. For, they can do ocean uh, money and they can do buried treasure digging so those are some nice ways of making money infamy it's just I'm not gonna remind you, you just hover over here that's how you finish the campaign you got to get lots of infamy so do pirate things um, technology the centuries of, of service or command is right here it's right in the middle when you're ready for it, go for it. You can also do the Legendary Admirals. We've been over loyalty. We've been over the rights, the regions of renown. But there's one little thing left in that is, besides the treasure maps, it's how do you get more regions of renown? Pieces of the Eight. There are pirates that have these medallions. When you get all of the... You know, you don't have to get all of the, of the medallions, but each medallion is going to give you access to renowned units. So this guy uh, gives you renowned uh, uh, deck droppers, and this one's zombie pirate deck hand mob. And you know, some renowns are better than other, and I'm going to tell you the two best ones: uh, regions of renowned. Uh, it is they're still locked right now. But you're gonna definitely want these Shade Wraith Deck Gunners. They fire spooky bullets. And they're ethereal. They are really good. And another renowned unit is these uh, Depth Guard, the Bloody Reaver Deck Guard. They are pretty nice. Um, the Rotting Promethean Gunnery Moms, they have some pretty good options too. This one is uh, the Curse Bullion of. Bogan half and boolean. Um, this is not on the map. It is a quest specific for Count Noculus. Count Noculus! I almost forgot to mention all about him. Eventually, he can ride a Necrophis Colossus. And definitely use him. He is a cannon. On a death boat. That is basically this unit right here. This guy has I given me so many victories. Or. It's insane. Uh, mortars are nice too. Alright. So I think that's everything you need to know about being a pirate of Count Noculus. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um... And you know, there's just a lot of little things to worry about. It's how can I how can I raid the sea? How can I raid the coast and make pirate coves? Uh, buried treasure maps. I've got infamy to grow. I got to keep loyalty to you know my fellow pirates I hire. I have offices. I have magical rights. I have big cannons and medallions. So it was fun role playing as Count Noculus, and I hope everyone gives it a try if they have not already. Uh, think like a pirate, and you're going to be so wealthy. I I've got six figures right here in the bank account, and it just keeps going up because I I keep finding more treasure, and I can even speed up to get closer if I wanted. Uh, yeah. Think like a pirate. Get those pirate coves. Win some fights. Uh, raise settlements. Um, you know you can. Oh, uh, you can also get money through missions and uh, and you can also get infamy through through missions too. So 
it's 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 pretty nice it's pretty nice gameplay i liked it it's a lot better than just bring a big army smack a city occupy it move the army smack a city occupy it this this gameplay it was was quite enjoyable i focus on the ocean and 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 yeah i highly i highly recommend it um i hope this helps you learn the the gameplay mechanics of being a pirate so you don't get frustrated when you bring your old thoughts of you know occupy move forward occupy move forward occupy move forward that that that's not the way to pirate that's not what pirates want to do so have fun in the open seas as uh, count noculus definitely uh oh yeah one last tip i highly recommend having a fleet patrol and and then another fleet coming behind it and patrol you know over here a, f a fleet patrol over here and a fleet patrol down here so you're gonna want like three fleets doing piratey things you know here 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 you know whatever it's make make money go do it it's fun it's fun being a pirate they have big cannons and guns and it's it's, it's super enjoyable all right have a good one bye